pretty much everything you need to know about taming and using a Tropiognathus in Ark Survival Evolved. Tropiognathus can only be located within the Ark Crystal Isles DLC map. They spawn primarily within three different regions, the White Shoals biome to the southwest, the Emberfall biome towards the center, and the Great Valley biome to the east. There can only be a few spawns of the Tropiognathus at any given time, so finding a high level can be pretty challenging. I used an S Plus Tech Transmitter to scan for Tropiognathus in order to make this video, and it took me about 15 separate Dino Wipes before I could even get one of them to spawn. After a long time of waiting, I was able to get three spawns on the map at the following coordinates. While you'd think they'd be soaring around in the sky like a Quetzal, they seem to prefer just strolling about on land, pondering why Wildcard didn't put more effort towards their audio files. If you're having trouble locating them, just listen for the flapping sounds of a Tapajara, or the biting sounds of a Tapajara, or the moaning sounds of a Tapajara, to bag yourself a Tapajara! 2.0. Because this one has a scoop beak. And a jetpack. So, how do you go about taming one of these bionic pelicans, you might ask? Well, the Tropiognathus is a passive tame that must be chain boloed and hand-fed its favorite foods. Simply trapping the Tropiognathus will not provide you with the prompt to feed it, so it has to be chain boloed in order to be fed. Just make sure that you have the food of choice on the last slot of your hotbar like you would other passive tames. The Tropiognathus' top three foods are Exceptional Kibble, Raw Mutton, and Raw Prime. While you can trap the Tropiognathus in a variety of different ways, I would recommend one of the following methods. Method number one is to use either a Paraceratherium or a Quetzal with a platform saddle and a mounted ballista turret with chain bolas to immobilize the Tropiognathus. Once it's stuck in place, quickly place small dino gates around it with a ceiling over top. Just make sure to leave a space between the dino gates so that you can later fire more chain bolas when it needs to be fed. Method number two is to use a flying mount and consume rare flowers to pull aggro the Tropiognathus so that it can be lured back into your base or into a trap you've constructed. From there, you can commence the same process of using chain bolas to immobilize it and then hand feeding it when the interval time has passed. Some sources suggest that the Tropiognathus can dismount you from your saddle if it catches you, but I was unable to force this during my testing. Still, I would recommend using something that can outpace a wild Tropiognathus just to be safe. And finally, method number three is to construct a trap nearby, run up to the Tropiognathus, and SLAP THAT ASS! Oh! Oh, it's a darted bird! It's a darted bird! But no, seriously, the Tropiognathus is a passive creature until provoked, so you can use this to your advantage and lure it into nearby traps that you've constructed. From there, ballista turret, chain bolo, smear food in its beak, you get the idea. Whatever method you decide to end up using, just be aware that the taming interval between passive feeds is quite long. On average, it takes around 30 minutes between bites, so expect to be there a while. Even with heavily boosted taming rates, taming a high level one of these bad boys will have you stuck by its side for hours. Because of this, I would recommend placing spikes around the area or having a tribe mate on patrol to protect you during the taming process. The Tropiognathus will constantly try to fly away before flying back towards you to attempt to attack again. Because of this, it's helpful to have a fully f f f f f <laughs> Because of this, it's helpful to have it fully closed off with dino gates as opposed to the pillar trap that I've made. It either works fine. You technically don't need a saddle to ride a Tropiognathus, but it's where it gets most of its functionality from. The saddle engram can be unlocked at level 65 and requires the following resources in order to craft. All right, so let's dive into the controls and functionality of the Tropiotapanathus Jarus Mahaganathanorosaurus to showcase some of what it can do. Tropiognathus feature a left mouse button bite that does minimal damage, a right mouse button beak scoop ability that can pick up other survivors or small creatures, a spacebar flight slash land ability, a large AOE pushback ability by double tapping the spacebar, a control key boost ability, the ability to draft with the spacebar, a C key evasive 180 degree turning ability, and a control key plus shift key super oh, holy shit! <gasps> In order to take full advantage of the Tropiognathus' capabilities, you'll need to place gasoline and grenades inside of its inventory, both of which are tracked on the UI at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen. Gasoline is used to activate the jetpack boost and drains rather slowly, meaning you can boost until your heart's content providing the bird's stamina holds up. Grenades are used as ammunition for the unmissable f***ing turret duct taped to the saddle. These grenades can actually damage all tiers of structures, however are more effective against stone and adobe and only deal minor damage to metal and tech. The grenades shot from the Tropiognathus' cannon are tracked and shot like other explosives of the game, although with variable results. Sometimes they're shot down immediately, and other times they can slip through the cracks of damaged structures. Because grenades deal AoE damage, they can be used to shoot other players off the backs of their mounts, although this is glitchy at best. I found that shooting players from behind seems to yield more consistent results, but it's still kinda wonky. The Tropiognathus features an acceleration bar that indicates how fast you're currently traveling. You're able to reach some pretty crazy speeds by combining both versions of the jetpack boost while diving similar to the mechanics of a griffin. 
They also feature a drafting mechanic where they can acquire a speed boost off of another nearby flyer by pressing the space bar, at the cost of no additional resources. Drafting will drastically boost your movement speed, making it possible to outpace other Tropiog Nathus using their highest tier of jetpack boost simply by drafting. This works with both allies and enemies in PvP. The Tropiog Nathus' right mouse button can be used to pick up and carry small creatures and survivors just like many of the other flyers in Ark. The only difference is that the survivors that are picked up are given the option to escape if they struggle enough, similar to the mechanics of a Bloodstalker. If an enemy player is bitten while being carried, they're given a debuff that will persistently decrease their armor's durability. On average, it takes about 30 seconds for a full set of base flak armor to shatter from a single Tropiog Nathus bite. While the debuff doesn't stack or multiply, biting the player multiple times while carrying them will obviously eat through their armor quicker due to the higher initial base damage being dealt. Investing points into damage doesn't seem to affect the rate at which their armor degrades, however higher base damage will break their armor quicker since it's doing more initial damage. The armor durability debuff is removed once a player has broken free or been released. The Tropiog Nathus' knockback ability is quite powerful and similar in range to that of a Wyvern knockback, however the cooldown of this ability is quite long and oftentimes not worth the wait. Tropiog Nathus are the first natural grinders added into Ark and function in the same way as an industrial grinder. Simply place items into its inventory, select it, and press the grind button. The yield from deconstructing an item seems to be slightly lower to that of an industrial grinder, but with the Tropiog Nathus you can deconstruct items on the fly with no gasoline required to do so. So with all this in mind, what is the Tropiog Nathus' main use? Aside from sparking my childhood memories of Jack 2's racing missions or Sly 3's Black Baron dogfights, well, given their incredible maneuverability, high movement speed, and aerial fighting capabilities, I consider the Tropiog Nathus to be primarily a travel mount or a PvP mount. If a travel mount is what you're looking for, you'll want to invest mainly into stamina with some point investment into health and weight. While the Tropiog Nathus' base movement speed is rather slow, its tiers of jetpack boosts have pushed it into the number one spot as the fastest flyer in the game currently, outpacing Pteranodons, Wyverns, and even Managarmers. Combine this with the relatively high health levels and a decent carry weight, and you've got yourself an incredibly useful travel companion. If a PvP mount is what you're looking for, you want to invest mainly into health and stamina. The Tropiog Nathus is unrivaled in aerial combat fights, not only outmaneuvering the competition in the sky, but out DPSing them as well with their ability to fire grenades from their turret. Couple this with their armor shredding debuff, and the Tropiog Nathus has quickly risen to be one of the most overpowered flyers in the game to date. Alright, well that about wraps up this video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to give it a like down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and leave me comments because... Oh! Oh, it's a... It's a dirty bird! <laughs>